there's gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria stain a violet slash purple slash bluish color due to a large thick layer of peptidoglycan in their cell wall, whereas gram-negative bacteria do not have that thick layer of peptidoglycan. So that's one of the main differences between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. We're going to be focusing more on gram-positive bacteria and specifically on the cocci, and it's simply just a plural form of the word coccus. And coccus is simply a term used to describe any bacteria with a round, ovoid, or spherical shape. The gram-positive stain purple slash blue slash violet on gram stain due to that thick layer of the peptidoglycan in their cell wall. Gram-positive cocci can be further divided into the catalase positive, so cat positive, staphylococcus, which are going to be seen under the microscope as clusters. Some important ones that I want to briefly mention are the coagulase positive, staph aureus, and the coagulase negative, staph epidemic epidermidis, and also the coagulase negative staph saprophyticus. Now both of these are coagulase negative. The staph epidermidis, however, is going to be novobiosin sensitive, so novobiosin sensitive, whereas the staph saprophyticus is going to be novobiosin resistant. A way that first aid uses that might help you remember these distinguishing features is the mnemonic no stress. No S-R-E-S, no stress. You could kind of put in a little T if you want, just to help remember it. No stress, no S-R-E-S. So this might help you by thinking novobiosin, so that's no for novobiosin, and then S for saprophyticus, novobiosin resistant, and E for epidermidis. Epidermidis is sensitive to novobiosin, so no S-R-E-S, no stress, novobiosin, saprophyticus is resistant, epidermidis is sensitive. What I want to discuss next is the catalase negative streptococcus. Cat negative streptococcus. Now remember that the staphylococcus are going to be seen in clusters. These guys are going to be visualized in chains, sort of like this chains, whereas the clusters will be seen something more like clustered together, whereas these are in chains. Gamma hemolytic, these cause no hemolysis. We're going to break this up into the enterococci and efficium. Now these can grow in bile and 6.5% sodium chloride. They are also associated with endocarditis after genitourinary, GU, genitourinary procedures. So in the question stem, if they're talking about some type of genitourinary procedures and asking about some type of strep, you can start homing in on enterococci, efficium, gamma hemolytic, no hemolysis. Now the other gamma hemolytic group is the non-enterococci strep bovis. Now these grow in bile, but not in 6.5% sodium chloride. Okay, these are also associated with endocarditis, associated with colonic malignancy. So that is how you can differentiate these two from each other. So let's take a look at the partial hemolysis next. So this is the alpha hemolytic incomplete partial hemolysis, and it will actually be appearing green. So green hemolysis. And I want to go over the strep viridens, which has no capsule. It is optochin resistant and also is bile insoluble. It is not lysed in bile. For strep viridens, no capsule, optochin resistant, bile insoluble. These are also 
associated with dental caries. So they're found in the normal flora of the oropharynx and cause dental caries. A subgroup, uh, more specifically of viridins, is strep mutans. S mutans. They can also be associated with S for subacute, bacterial endocarditis, E for that. So it can be associated with subacute bacterial endocarditis at the damaged valve. The subgroup of the viridins for that is strep sanguinis. So I'll put in parentheses S sanguinis. A little subnote about the strep sanguinis is that it has the ability to make these things called dextrans which bind to fibrin platelet aggregates on damaged heart valves. So subacute bacterial endocarditis is most certainly the one connected with strep sanguinis. Okay, so that was the strep viridens group. Let's take a look at the other group. Is strep pneumonia. Put strep pneumo for pneumonia. Strep pneumo. Instead of being optician resistant, strep pneumo is optician sensitive. And it is also bile soluble two important points for strep pneumo. Optician sensitive and also soluble in bile, meaning that if you place strep pneumo bacteria in bile, they will not be able to be cultured. Now some really high yield associations for strep pneumo that we have to keep in mind are number one, pneumonia, two, otitis media, three, sinusitis, and four is sepsis. High yield associations that we have to be aware of with strep pneumo. You can also use the mnemonic O-V-R-P-S, that's overpass, O-V-R-P-S, to differentiate these two with regard to optogen. O for optogen, V for viridians, R, viridians is resistant to optogen, and then P for pneumonia, strep pneumo, and the S for the fact that it is sensitive to optogen. Okay, so next let's take a look at the beta hemolytic complete or clear hemolysis. And these two groups we're going to be dealing with are the group B strep, also known as strep agalectiae, and also group A strep, which is strep pyogenes. pyogenes. So both of these are beta hemolytic clear hemolysis. Group B strep is bacitracin resistant, whereas group A strep is bacitracin sensitive. A mnemonic we can use to help remember these is B brass. Bacitracin, group B strep is resistant. Group A strep, A for group A, is bacitracin sensitive. That might help you remember these important points. Group B strep is also camp factor positive, which is certainly unique to group B strep. Group B strep is associated with neonatal sepsis, neonatal meningitis, and neonatal pneumonia. I put N for neonatal meningitis and pneumonia. Group A strep, all types of high yield things associated with it, like pharyngitis, cellulitis, erysipelas, I'm going to go ahead and put for the fourth key point RF for rheumatic fever. And lastly, five post strep glomerulonephritis. So, this is a massive, massive high yield topic covered on board exams. This is not all encompassing. For my work cited and references, you can be sure to find them down below. 